the sheriff's office for quite a long time. Uh, 18 years? 18. Yeah. I've got 15 with the county, so yeah. you got me by three. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember coming in. You were always a staple in the sheriff's office involved with everything. Try to be. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk more about that in a little okay. bit. Introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Jesse Hambrick. Uh, I work as a couple of different things for the sheriff's office, but uh, right now I'm our PIO, which is public information officer, uh, working with the media generally to get information out about bigger events that are going on. Mm -hmm. I also supervise all of our school resource officers um, in our what we call scope division, which is something that the sheriff just recently created when he came in. Basically just an outreach group mm -hmm. um, of, of uh, deputies and, and supervisors that specialize in just community right. relations. Right. So uh, I supervise all our school resource officers. We have 14 total mm -hmm. in uh, 10 different schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do work a little bit of investigations, gang stuff mm -hmm. too as well. So Now, uh, school resource officers and schools have been in the news a lot lately. Oh, yeah. So that's basically what we're going to focus on today is school okay. safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse's going to help us out with some information, tell us what the sheriff's office is doing and uh, kind of ease, ease minds out there. Uh, but we also do cooking. You know, this is Serving's Kitchen with a Cause, so we're all about helping the community. Uh, and I don't know if we have an entity within this community that does more beneficial work for the community than the sheriff's office. So I think it's yeah. appropriate we have you guys on. Thank you. Yeah, we're and, glad to be uh, here. So that's the Serving's part. And the Kitchen part, we got to cook. Okay. Now, Jesse has no idea what we're cooking today. Uh, we have our ingredients cloaked in what we call the beach towel of deception. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so gotcha. no clue. I'm gonna reveal them right now and then I'm gonna let you kinda guess, see if you can okay. guess what we're cooking. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. What do we got there? Kind of a hodgepodge. And I'll let, it's two recipes, so. One's breakfast kind of a goodie or one's a dessert kind of a goodie, I would think. Dessert, yes. And the other one is maybe a, a would it have some a Mexican flair? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. You're, you're, you're almost dead on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So both are going to come from Mexico? Well, here's here's the deal. We always do some sort of theme. We play on you okay. know, the, the guests and that kind of thing. And since we're talking about school safety, you got to do school food. Oh, yeah. So what we're sense. doing, okay. we've, got, we've got pizza, but we're going to do a fiestata pizza. Okay. The Mexican right. pizza. Okay, that cool, you, yeah. Uh, a I classic. think a lot of people have yeah. had that in school. Is so. it square? Uh, well, th we're going to make ours <laughs> hexagon. Okay. All right. Because, right. you know, square or rectangle pizza, that's, that's a normal. I grew up with the square pizza. That's just school. the Italian yeah. pizza. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to spice it up a little bit. Okay. Um, and then we're doing peanut butter fingers. Oh, good. So we got Excellent. pizza. We got the fiestata pizza. We got the, the peanut butter fingers. And we're going to cook that up. We're going to start with the peanut butter fingers because we have to make those, get them in, a, a in the refrigerator All right. and let them chill a little bit. And okay. then we'll do the fiestata pizza. Uh, okay. And we'll talk a little bit about school safety. Cool. We are set up to do the peanut butter fingers classic school dessert, right? All right, so we have two different things we're going to combine. Uh, in this bowl, we're going to be doing the unheated ingredients. Okay. And then over here, we have a double boiler so that I can melt some chocolate and peanut butter together. Okay. Uh, the majority of the peanut butter is actually going to go in here. Um, so I'm going to get you started. If you'll take a whole package of those graham crackers, okay. put them in the plastic bag, and kind of break them up, we want them into crumbs. All righty. And then in here, I've got some, I've got a whole cup of melted butter. I'm gonna pour that in there. That's when you know it's gonna be good. If you use butter. Man, butter equals better. But yeah. And then we're also gonna do two cups of confectioner's sugar. So butter and sugar, we're headed in the right direction. All ready. making a huge mess. Confectioner's sugar is a little harder to work with than uh, regular sugar because it likes to just fly away. Yeah. It's light and fluffy. 
But good too. Yeah. Butter's I mean, best friend. Butter's best friend. Mm. Good. Hey. That'll work. Probably. We want some bigger pieces, smaller pieces. What are we doing here? We can do varied sizes, uh, but mostly small. Small. Okay. It'd be easier to combine. All right. Uh, and then we are going to add a cup of peanut butter. So I will start on that. Try not to make too much crunchy noise. <laughs> But that's a, that's a, a good stress reliever. Thank you. Yeah. Get to crush stuff up. Not that there's any stress at your job. No, I, there's none. Are you kidding? No. It's actually why I work with kids uh, a lot with school safety and all. They're they're a rewarding group. Yes. Although you see a lot of times. You hear the bad stuff on the media, all the kids, you know, the, the bad things they do. Yep. There's still a huge, large, large number of kids that are, you know, going to serve in the military, that are going to, to college, that are going on to become uh, doctors and lawyers and all the things that we don't right. think about every right. day. Sports, music, you yep. know, all those things. So. You, hear, you hear the bad stuff because it's, it's what's quote unquote exciting on the news. Yeah. All right, that may be pretty good. All right, over here, I'm gonna start heating up the chocolate. So I need, I'm gonna do one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate. And I am going to do this with a half cup measure, measure, because I don't want to combine this with the peanut butter. It probably won't come out. So we're doing math today, too. Yeah. I'm having to figure this out. Okay. I need three half cups to, to make, make a cup one and, and a half. half. Got yeah. you. I got you. Man, talk about school. This is school. This is school's just starting right here. Four tablespoons of peanut butter. And I'm going to use my fingers for this one to get this out of here. It's all good. Uh, yeah. There's one. That's about two. And as I'm finishing this up, I want to know more about you. You oh. said you've been you've been with the sheriff's office for 18 years. Okay. Um, number one, how did you wind up at the sheriff's office? And then number two, what has your journey been at the sheriff's office? Yeah. Well, um, I, I worked in law enforcement obviously prior to this. I've been in law enforcement for. 28 years. Wow. Quite a long time, yeah. You're yeah. not that old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be 48 this year. Wow. So, uh, Man, you I carry it well. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's all the peanut butter bars I've been <laughs> it's a I, um, I actually started uh, working for, uh, working in dispatch. The very, the very beginnings of my career was uh, in Stone Mountain. Uh, from there, I went to work at Bartow County Sheriff's Department for a couple of years, and was always looking for that place where I would, I guess, kind of call it home. So I went to uh, Villarica Police Department for a while and uh, worked there as a narcotics agent, mm -hmm. um, assigned to the GBI on a task force, and just kept looking for that place. And I, I came over to Douglas County, and uh, I've been here, like I said, almost going on 20 years now. So uh, I love it here. I work narcotics the majority of my career in Douglas County and then from there went to uh, uh, I guess what you'd call kind of school safety gangs, right. juvenile crimes kind of a thing. Uh -huh. um, and since 2007 I've been involved in in the school resource side of things. So going on now 11, 12 years uh -huh. or more. Um, yeah, yeah, probably close to 12 years I've been helping with the, the school resource officers. Mm -hmm. So, And you, you've established a lot of contacts within not only the school system, but the community as a whole. Yeah, I mean, I was always, like you said, I was always trying to do something more. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, 
I wanted to be involved, so uh, I started the Meth Task Force and ran the mm -hmm. Meth Task Force for years. Which and that's the first time I met you because uh, Rita Rainwater was, was in office and we started a show with her and I think one of the first shows we did was highlighting the Meth Task Force mm -hmm. and talking about you know, the problem. Five, yeah, probably, it was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. You know, talking about the the problem that we have, but also how proactive Douglas oh, County yeah. was being yeah. with the meth problem in, in Douglas County. It was one of the first, well, it was the first task force, public, I guess, you know, uh, combined task force with community members, law enforcement, everybody involved in the state, if not the Southeast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dr. Vance Potty and I started that back in 2004. Mm -hmm. And so that brought me into a lot of contacts outside of law enforcement that I wouldn't have normally had. State legislators, uh -huh. um, you know, pastors and community members, uh, you know, even people that were struggling with the problem itself. Right. And so I've also um, ran the, the MACE program, which was our, uh, what most people call scared straight. It was really just an early intervention program. Right, um, and we filmed you there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty cool show. Yeah, oh yeah. Deputy, uh, which now is Sergeant Brooks, uh, but at the time it was Investigator Brooks started that, Shea Brooks, and mm -hmm. um, we just kind of ran it together and made it all happen. It, uh, it got national attention and was filmed on a couple of national episodes mm -hmm. of different, different uh, times and putting Douglas County on the map putting, for good things. On, the good things yeah we want to show that we're doing the you know we yeah we have a problem but we want to make sure that at the same time we're also addressing it not that's, just that's, highlighting the that's problem. my life yeah so many problems but I'm trying you fix them I'm trying you fix them. <laughs> so that, that's been it, it really has the opportunity to put me into uh, contact with a lot of the community on many different levels and I've and I've loved it. I, you're, you'd be hard pressed to find a person who's been in Douglas County for any period of time that doesn't r at least recognize your name because you've been involved with so many different things in the community. Yeah. And it seems like every job that you've had is something that directly affects our community in a positive way. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people who are doing, you know, great things at the sheriff's office, but they don't necessarily get their names out there because they're sort of behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. And I know that's not what it's about for you, um, but just by the nature of what you're doing, people get to know you. And, and that's sort of one of the secrets behind your success is your ability to go in and meet everybody and know sure. everybody. Yeah. Because the larger your network, the more help you have. Oh yeah, yeah. or the more people you can help. Right. Um, and it's a good point because one of the unique things that I have about you know not only being involved with school safety and stuff like that, but also coach okay. in, the, in the school system. Uh -huh. And I, this is my, ninth, I think, ninth year um, coaching girls soccer at Alexander High School, uh -huh. so. Um, you meet tons you know, of Oh my like gosh, that. you know, parents that are, you know, you have 34 girls every year that you're, you know, directly involved with in sports and, and in their personal life in many ways, trying yeah. to advise and help and take care of them. Well, then you've got... Because you're a mentor. 60 something parents of those 34 girls. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, 120 grandparents of those girls. And, you know, before you know it, it it's... Uh, You've been there nine years, and you're like, ah, I mean, I, there's not a person that walks in that I don't, I've yeah. not met or don't know, and or have some sort of connection. some connection to, yeah. yeah. And it's just because you're, you're there and you're volunteering, and 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 it's been great. So the, the 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 sheriff has been great about letting me continue to mm -hmm. to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a I had a coach come up to me the other day from inside the school. I'd come in in uniform. We were going to get ready before a game. And I hadn't changed into the coach's outfit, mm -hmm. you know, yet. And I'm in my uniform, and I walk in, and I'm sitting with the girls and the guys, do, having a pregame meal. Uh -huh. And uh, he just came up to me, and he said, you know, I just want you to know, you may not hear this or, or maybe not even understand. He said, but these are your players, and you see them as that. But you don't understand that they see you as, as different. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're their coach. But they're also getting that great, unique opportunity to see you as, as an officer when right. you come in and you sit right. down. And, 
and he's like, they know who to come to if there's a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what's cool because it's almost weekly I'm getting a text or a phone call from a friends, a family, somebody from my coaching position that says, hey, I know that so-and-so likes you. They, they said you're a good guy. We can, mm -hmm. we can talk to you. And so I use that coaching position to continually further the, the job that we have at the Sheriff's Department, which is serving the community. Right. And that's, our sheriff is big on that. Yeah. So it seems deal. like it. Yeah, when Sheriff Pounds came in, uh, you know, there, there was this huge effort to connect you guys with the community Without a doubt. in one way or another, yeah. it was going to happen. Well, I mean, we're all in this together and, and, you know, I've, I've seen the way that the pendulum has swung mm -hmm. and it, sometimes it swings in the direction of, you know, law enforcement is out here by themselves yeah. and trying to do a job that nobody wants us around. Yeah. And we didn't want that. You right. know, our, our, we want our community to know that we do have a job that's unpleasant at times. Mm -hmm. Those guys that are out there on the streets, they have to do a lot of things that, that, you know, some people don't like. Right. But at the same time, our sheriff's very clear that we're going to, A, take care of the community. Mm -hmm. B, we're going to take care of kids. Mm -hmm. And C, we're going to continue to fight crime because we, we all live here. We all have kids that go to school here. Right. And so the safer we make it mm -hmm. for the community, the safer we're making it for ourselves as well. So he's done a great job of, of that community outreach. Mm -hmm. Well, B that you mentioned, keeping the kids safe, that's what we're gonna talk about in just a minute. When we come back, we're gonna cook the fiestata, but first, we need to get this into the refrigerator. Uh -huh. It's gonna be in there for about an hour, which will give us plenty of time to make our fiestatas, and then uh, we'll basically be ready to eat. I'm ready, I'm already ready. Quick and easy. Yep. We have redone the set for your pleasure and so that we can make fiestadas. Mm, the most important part. Mexican pizzas. It already smells a little bit like uh, Mexican pizza in here because we have our taco seasoning added into our fake ground beef. Fake as in it was ground before or fake as in it's not beef? It's not beef. Oh, interesting. We're, we're going a little bit healthier. That's good. There are a lot I'm of things you can do to, to make this dish a little healthier. The peanut butter bar is not so much. Can't, no. Nah, you had to go all out with that. Uh, but this recipe, we're actually substituting the ground beef for uh, veggie crumbles. Cool. Um, and I've done this a lot of times and I can't even tell a difference. So yeah. probably right. it's taco seasoning. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean whatever you combine it with it's is what gonna, it's gonna taste yeah. like. So the uh, ground beef is ready with our taco seasoning. We can set it to the side, let it cool off a little bit. All right. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna prepare our dough. Got it. Now I have not done this before and I don't know about you guys, but when I was in school the fiestata was shaped like a stop sign or a hexagon or it Mine was, was square. You had you know, square. Like re rectangle maybe. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna choose, you can choose what, what shape you want. I got it. And I'm gonna choose what shape I want and we'll see where it goes. So I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit and I am no expert Pizza sauce. with doing this dough. I don't really wanna get it that stretched out because we don't want thin crust. Uh, from what I remember, it was it was a little it was a little thicker. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like Sometimes thin crust really. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. So um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tear. You, well, hang on a second. Look at this. Oh, you DC can't do it TV that. 23 pizza cutter. That'll work. So I'm gonna cut you out a little bit of dough here to make a your own mini pizza. You can shape it to whatever shape you want. Well, well a triangle's a good start. <laughs> a triangle will work. <laughs> I'm actually going to try to get mine into that hexagon shape. Oh, I'm going I don't, with the square I don't know. Then. I don't know if I made a mistake by doing the, you know, putting it all back into a blob. But we're gonna we'll find, find out. out. We're gonna find out real quick. <laughs> they may not be any shape at all. Now here's the good news. We have another thing of dough right Thank there. 
backup <laughs> plan B. Yes, exactly. All right. So do you have a DC-23 roller? That's what we need. I guess I'm gonna, I think I'm going to need that. <laughs> push it out. Yeah. Push it out. Way out. <laughs> So these will be our deep dish pizzas. Oh Lord, I think. <laughs> I'm glad we got the plan B, I think. We will we're gonna we're gonna use these regardless, but we definitely will, you know. Mine's kind yours of not a, really what getting, did you do to I mean flatter? Yeah, yours is turned into bread. Oh, so I'm having a fiesta sandwich. Yeah, this is more like French bread pizza. I got it. I'll have whatever. But we'll I mean, do it. I mean so that'll you be can. one, okay. this will be one. Mine, yeah. Mine actually has kind of more of the octagon shape. It does. So we're doing it backwards. Yeah, I know. All okay. right. So I'm going to, let me see if I can do a for real. Like faux real or? Faux rizzle. I got it. All right. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Perfect. There. Nailed it. Okay. That is amazing. And then... You, can you get a square? And then that one will be shaped like that. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you, your food works for you. You, you don't work you for know, the food. You that's, know, that's what I'm saying. And then that one's going to be a big piece that we'll cut gotcha. later. It's got the piece And this of shape. is a baby piece. Here. Okay. So what we have to do, we've got an oven over there. We have an oven. It's true. We have an oven. And it is heating up to 450. So we have to pre-bake the dough at 450 for about three minutes. Okay. And then we'll pull it out and we'll put all the toppings on. Right. So while we're waiting for it to get up to three minutes, what I'm gonna do is put about a half a cup of this pizza sauce in here. And I'm gonna do a little more than what the recipe says because we've actually got way more dough than what they suggest. And then we're gonna put a little bit of cumin in there and I'm gonna let you stir that up. Got it. That's gonna be our pizza sauce. All right. We've got some cheddar cheese, and I got the, the wider grated, because yeah. you know it's never fully like no. perfect yeah, on, yeah. on there. You know, you got the, you can see the actual strands of cheese on the pizza. Oh yeah. And then of course we've got our ground beef here. Okay. So that's gonna be our toppings. Looks like our uh, we're almost up to temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. We're going to be in there for three minutes. Three whole minutes. All right. And while while we are waiting, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of the the uh, programs and the safety <clears throat> precautions you guys are doing in the school system? Well, I mean, you know, just like any other, I guess, uh, just like a magician, you don't always want to tell all your secrets. Right. You right. know, you don't, you don't want to, to get out there and publicize exactly what all we do because you right. don't want people learning and, and then changing. Finding a way to break yeah, it. Every time the, the media puts something out about you know a, a bad event, it, it does change the way that the next event's going to take place because mm -hmm. people are learning and they see it and you know, it, it, evolves. It's, it's, it is a bad thing in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of great things going on. Uh, first of all, all of our uh, SROs is what we call them, school resource officers are CIT certified, which is crisis intervention. Okay. Um, they, they know, uh, they take about a week course, and some of them have even taken, we have actually taken more training, more than just the week, but it's how to deal with kids that are in crisis, mm -hmm. um, mental health concerns. Could be anything from just a real stressful environment mm -hmm. to something of a true diagnosable problem that kids are dealing with. Right. And so instead of you know just basically pushing them off onto someone else or letting mm -hmm. the school worry about a lot of those, we we are there to help recognize and then guide them in the direction of those resources, whether it be at the school or outside or mm -hmm. or, or wherever. Just another person at the school who can detect those types. Just of to things. look for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, a lot of those kids know they see the the uniform and come up and, and mm -hmm. talk. Right. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the officers are, are drug identification trained, mm -hmm. gang identification trained, um, and even more than that, um, before active shooting became a, a recognizable word in the community mm -hmm. through the media, you know, we have been training on this for years. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a, a great group of guys that and gals that you know, three, two, three times, sometimes four times a year, mm -hmm. we'll go to the schools when the schools are closed, the kids are out on mm -hmm. vacation or break or whatever, 
and we actually go through those schools so that instead of just having one SRO that's familiar with the nooks and crannies of the school, you mm -hmm. have every SRO right. that goes that at least has the, a good understanding mm -hmm. of what's, you know, the layout of the school. So if there is a problem... They, they're not coming in blind. They know what's going on. And um, the active shooter training is uh, it's intense, it's real, very real, mm -hmm. uh, simulated real. Um, and it just gives the officers a, the understanding of, of knowing what am I going to do if someone comes into the school and, right. and tries to hurt somebody. Right. And not only that, but we often question ourselves. Just the other day in a meeting, I looked at all my folks in the face and said, hey, you, you know, check yourself. Make sure that you're willing to get up every morning and when you put the vest on, you put your, you know, your gear on, make sure that you're ready to go into that school. Right. And if at any given time, you, you know, you're at the point where you're just, you don't think you can do it, let us know. Yeah. These folks didn't hesitate. They're like, hey, that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so it's, it's, a good thing. it's way more uncommon, I would, I would think, that, you know, someone in the sheriff's office would be hesitant in doing something like that than, than, you know, what we have seen, unfortunately, in one instance lately. Yeah. Um, so I, I think maybe some people were like, oh, wait a minute, you know, just because we have a school resource officer, um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but what you're saying is we're ready. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you can never, obviously you don't ever know what's on someone's mind. You don't ever know what to expect, but, right. You know, we have the training. We also have um, Alexander High School took the opportunity through um, Deputy Aaron Smith mm -hmm. to uh, work with their leadership program to actually buy trauma kits, which mm -hmm. are actually rather large yeah. kits, um, which a lot of people call them active shooter response bags. There's mm -hmm. different names for them, but basically, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a good amount of of um, medical supplies. And they were expensive. These kids worked mm -hmm. hard at Alexander to, to, to raise the money mm -hmm. through a lot of various uh, local businesses to provide us with these kits. And it could be something that c could save a life just having that, that bright blue, you know, kit with you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we, we've worked on, uh, e every time we work, we're trying to change it up and come up with something new. Um, we have a policy that we, you know, make sure that the schools are constantly under supervision of law enforcement, no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, won't go into all the details of that, but mm -hmm. we want to make sure that our schools have have the resources mm -hmm. of an officer that is able to to respond for medical, fire emergency, and even in the case of, you know, a mass violence situation, that we're mm -hmm. ready to. To get there and, and be there. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the community is familiar with an incident that happened at one of our high schools last year. Mm -hmm. the, the SROs responded to as if it were an active shooting mm -hmm. and um, I can't, I, I mean I'm proud of them. They handled it, they didn't lose their nerve, they went right. in, they secured the scene, took care of victims as needed in that case and mm -hmm. you know the, 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 the person who decided to hurt themselves in that situation. Um, and it, and it turned out great, and the school mm -hmm. system was right there with us, working hand in hand, mm -hmm. taking care of you know those fifteen hundred kids at, at that high school. Right. So, so although it was a tragedy, it was a it was a success in in the response. Yeah, I mean, it was the, the I, what I always say was it was the best of a worse situation. Right. Right. So, That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So we're gonna put some sauce on these bad boys. They're looking amazing. Yeah. Mine not so much. <laughs> I wouldn't you, say it's like cauliflower. It, <laughs> yeah, it has a vegetable appearance. So it's yeah. even healthier now. I mean, it's it's all about the mindset. Yeah. So if you want to start with the sauce, just okay. kind of you know put a little sauce on there. I will follow behind you and do some cheese. All right. And as a young man, I fantastic. I actually grew up in a little working in a little pizza shop. Awesome. So I have got that, experience. I have a little bit of that Perfect. flair there. Maybe we should do ours first. Yeah. So in case we run out of uh, sauce, we uh, mine's not going to require much. Yeah, just a big dump glob in yeah. the middle. Hey, it's this is looking just like school pizza, though. I mean, I'm making a mess. That's, that's okay. <laughs> that's going to be an extra deep dish. <laughs> a little minute or two more in the in the. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one here, but. <laughs> The, the little baby cheese. The che yeah, I mean, so we'll go back to the big thing. 
And I've learned, even at home, you can't really mess pizza up, dude. You can't. I mean, it's, it's bread, cheese, it's and sauce, and meat, I mean, you know? I mean... It may not look pretty, but your stomach still it's, appreciates it. It's gonna it. be good. It's gonna yeah. be good. All right, so I'm gonna dump a little bit of this on each one, too. And I'm gonna make a huge mess. It's all right. It's not gonna look exactly like the uh, the school pizza we had, but you know what? That stuff was made in a factory. Our stuff is homemade. Homemade, yeah. And I, and I'll tell you now, one of the cool things is, you always hear the the, the, the debate about school food or not, and, and mm -hmm. I eat it quite often at, at times when I'm in the schools. And right. They have a, a huge number of selections. Yeah. I mean, it just amazes me. What you and I grew up with being able to eat, you got the one thing, or it's you got, changed. You know, oh yeah. yeah, they got salads and pizzas and subs, and you know, they have so many different things. So. We, we filmed a show at Chapel Hill High School, and this was even several years ago, and it blew my mind how much selection oh, they yeah. had. It's it, like was, a it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Again, just like your, our parents used to say, y'all you, 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 got it no. easy nowadays. Now. We had to eat standing up, yeah, oh yeah. uphill both yeah, ways. Both. <laughs> <laughs> if you will open that okay. up for me, we're gonna slip these in there for about 10 to 13, 15 minutes. We'll kind of keep an eye on them. 18 or 20 yeah, for years or us. Whatever it takes. Yeah. I'll right. go ahead and set the timer for about 12. Okay. And well, that was 15, but we'll keep an eye on it, whatever. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll be ready to eat. I'm ready. Man, I'm so hungry. I'm ready. Whew. I'm gonna start eating some of this. <laughs> We're at the finish line. My favorite part of the show. The eating part. As always. Uh, let's analyze these. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, here's, the yeah. here's the good news. Here's the good news. They smell exactly. I swear, it's like school. Exactly. Sw he said he had a flashback. I had a, yeah, like I was thinking of taking a math test when I <laughs> yes. smelled my. It smells delicious. Oh my God. Yeah, but, the shape is not that great yeah. on either one. This is the best one. Yeah, and, and it was it's the still, accidental one. Yeah. It kind of just came out. Yeah, right? and it's, it still looks like a, yeah. a car accident. Well, my tongue doesn't see. You know, we're going to try gonna them. Taste good, so. Now, the peanut butter bars. They dang. came out, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, no they, doubt. they turned out really well. I mean, that's just nothing but goodness. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. And we had Ch to go with chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. I mean, we're at school. Yeah. We got the divided trays. Well, um, yeah, with a lion. <laughs> Mine has a lion on it. We got the corn. We got the roll. I mean, yeah. what are you saying? Triple carbs? It is. I mean, like carving up so you can make it through your math test. Back man. in the day, man, I mean, after lunch, we just passed out. Yeah, you, just, <laughs> you slept till like third, you know, third period or whatever. It is. No wonder I failed every class <laughs> after lunch. <laughs> All right, so I think we should try the uh, the savory item first. Let's go the with the pizza. Fiestata. Can yeah. we pick it up? Well, oh, yeah. I mean, we can give it a shot. That's what I did, and oh, it's Lord, not it's, falling apart. That's it's a five good pounds. Time. All right, all right, here we go. Oh man, it's good. Nothing wrong with that. Mm mm, it's good. Absolutely, just like regular pizza. No matter what it looks like, it's good. Yeah, we got some more rolls going back here, so. I'm gonna turn that off. Yeah, it tastes, you know, it's, like just regular pizza except Mexican style. Yeah, it's it is. It's good. It is a flashback. It's easy. And it was easy, right? I mean, we had the pre-prepared dough, so you like. If we would have left the dough alone, <laughs> as you can see over here, yeah. we actually just, you know, pulled, spread the dough, spread out. The dough yeah. out. We put the ingredients on, and it turned out pretty well. Now yeah. it did have some bubbles that we had to pop. But other yeah. than that, it looks great. Yeah. Um, so if you want to do just a regular pizza, it right. works just fine. It did. Uh, now we're gonna go in for the good stuff. Oh yeah, dessert first. Yes, I'm going in with the hands. I'm doing. I want to. I want to be really specific about looking for these graham crackers that I cr <laughs> that I crushed. All right. Oh my God. Mm. Mm. Peanut butter and chocolate, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't lose with that. You can make it to like definitely recess with that <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, it give you that that extra little oh, little something for you need. Kickball. Yeah, no doubt. Own chocolate milk on top. Mm. This is quite a healthy meal. Well, hey, cheers. Living, be happy. Mm-hmm.
thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, we appreciate, on behalf of the community, thank you to the Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff's yeah. Office for uh, implementing these programs, for being proactive, really, uh, because like you said, the things that are going on now that we're dealing with as a nation, we've really been preparing for oh, those yeah. types of things years. for years. Years, yeah. Um, and we, we thank you for that. I yeah, appreciate it. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you for helping me cook this school oh, yeah. food. Yeah, ready to finish. This has been Serving's Kitchen with a Cause. We'll see you next month.